Today on Ballistic Barbecue, we are going to be visiting the roots of Santa Maria Barbecue with an old school sirloin cap cook on the Ironworks Santa Maria Grill from Sunterra Pro Series. Let's get going. Before we can start cooking, we need a fire. Let's go ahead and get this pit lit. So here in the pit, I have some red oak. This is the funnest and most efficient way to light a fire like this. Weed burner, 30 bucks at your discount hardware store, money well spent. So what I'm going to do is crank up the heat here. I wanna make sure that I'm heating up all this wood, and then we're gonna get a good fire going. That looks good. We got a fire. So while we wait for these splits of wood to burn down, I'm going to go ahead and prep that sirloin cap for you guys. And here's the meat I'm cooking today, sirloin cap. This is just under four pounds. And you may also know it by Colette, a Colette roast, or now very trendy picanha. It's good. And this really takes us back to the roots of Santa Maria Barbecue. Everybody associates Santa Maria Barbecue with tri-tip, but it wasn't just tri-tip. They were cooking what then were considered butcher's cuts, inexpensive pieces of meat. Nobody really wanted to buy them. And the, they had a secret. This stuff is delicious. It's very, very tender. And this was sent to me by my friends over at Eat Y'all. And they're involved in a campaign right now trying to spread the word from the California Beef Council that, hey, chefs, restaurants in California, buy local. We've got some great, great beef out here in California. So first thing I'm gonna do is kind of clean this up a little bit. It doesn't need a whole lot of work, but there's some silver skin here that I'm going to remove. It looks pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is stake this out. We're going to cook it in, as steaks today. So you see the grains here are kind of going this way and we're actually going to cut with the grain on this. So I'm going to cut right across here. That's a really, you can see the grain there. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna continue doing that. And I'm going a little over an inch, about an inch and a quarter thick here. Good. Now we're going to season this meat. So I have here some salt, pepper, garlic powder, equal amounts of each that I mixed up and put it in an old seasoning bottle here. Shake this on. This is very traditional Santa Maria. Keeping it simple. Very much like Texas. That looks good. And we're leaving that fat cap on. That's the best part of this cut. This cut it has just such a beautiful flavor and that fat is magic it really is now we're going to take a skewer so back in the day imagine the pit masters you know santa maria ranch gigantic spits i mean huge huge skewers with whole pieces of sirloin and and steaks cut from you know sirloin cap just bent on the things and just cooking them all day. This is what we're gonna do. We're not gonna cook all day, I hope. I hope not. <laughs> so we're gonna go with this little guy, the little snack piece here. Slide it on. Now whenever you're using a skewer, and I don't care whether it's making little shish kebabs, if you can find skewers that are flat like this and not round, buy those. The, the round ones eventually are just, you're going to be turning the shish kebab and the meat's going to be more or less staying in place. So so I'm inserting it into the meat and then kind of bending it over. And obviously the larger pieces will be easier. 
very Brazilian thing I'm doing here, but this is what they were doing on those ranches in like central, central California. And there we are. Let these guys relax a little bit while I wait for, actually it looks like we might be ready to cook. I'm gonna go get the cameras all set up around the grill and we are going to cook these beautiful sirloin caps, steaks slash picanha slash colette, whatever you wanna call it. It's good. As you can see, we now have a really nice bed of coals and it is an absolutely beautiful day out right now. Uh, what, a, what a great day to grill, it's so nice. I'm gonna get the meat on the grill here. I'm gonna go ahead and lower it down just a tad. So this is going to be a very easy cook. I'm just gonna keep flipping these skewers of meat. I'll be monitoring the temperature. I'm looking for an internal temp of 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Other than that, I mean, if it looks like it's getting too hot, I'll raise the grate. If it looks like it needs a little bit more heat, lower the grate and keep an eye on, since it is wood and they're still burning down, if I see, you know, flames, I'll, I'll elevate the meat a little bit just to keep the meat off of the direct flame. Or I can push the logs away. <laughs> this is just a very fun way to cook. Uh, again, we're getting back to the roots of how we used to cook before all the electric devices that we've incorporated into our lives. So that's all there is to it. The cook is coming along great. I wanted to make sure that that fat cap gets some love here from the heat too. So I have them kind of standing up on end, leaning into each other. The smell right now, this kind of crisp air and, and that smell of the rendering fat. Oh, really good. All right, looking beautiful. We just hit that target temp. I'm going to get these off the pit, let them rest a little bit. Then we're gonna slice them up, share them with you guys. Someone's gonna ask how long did it take? <laughs> I don't even wear a watch anymore. Um, I'm guessing 25 to 30 minutes. That sounds about right. It smells good though. <laughs> And here we are, folks, Santa Maria barbecue, the way it used to be, kind of. Let's give this a try. Well, so I have three pieces of, of steak here. They all look like they got Pretty evenly cooked, medium rare. Looks good. Check that out. Beautiful. Cheers. Oh. So, so tender. When you're talking bang for the buck, I think this is really difficult to beat. And there's still a lot of people across the country that haven't heard. <laughs> I mean, you can get a whole roast and stake it out like this for about what you would pay for a really, like a prime, nice thick ribeye. Serve a lot more people. It's tender, it's juicy, and it has that just a really beefy flavor. And, and I say that a lot of people, well, it's beef. But there are cuts, dare I say filet mignon, that doesn't have as rich of a flavor as this. Mm. Wow. Anyway, guys, thank you for stopping by. If you're not subscribed, please hit that sub button. Make sure you ring the notification bell, thumb up the video if you like it. I hope you did. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.